From the Schmoes No Network Studios, outside Moss Osley, Tatooine, this is time for Jedi Alliance, with your hosts, Master Kenobi, Ken Napsuck, and the young Padawan, Queen Amadala, Maud Garrett. Hey, Schmoville, how are you on this fine day? I love that we are coming to you from the Moss Osley area of Kinda. Tatooine, because it yeah. is that hot! I don't know what I said, but I said it. <laughs> so it makes sense. Huge show uh, coming for you today. We not only have a beautiful guest on, but we're going to be announcing the results for Jewel of the Fates. Uh, we're going to be forcing on you some of the greatness that was Star Wars Rebels that recently premiered over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we're also going to tackle something that we've never touched on before, Theories. theories, conspiracy theories. Yeah, this kind of came into our uh, radar screen, so to speak. Uh, last week, we brought up some uh, a theory about Boba Fett. We're going to get into that. And we, you were like, I want to delve into this. Maybe because we're both Game of Thrones fans, we're so used to having theories to oh, I love on to, to conspire. Yeah. I do. And oh, things yes. that can sort of make sense, I'm right there. Yeah. Even if it doesn't really, I'm like, sure. Maybe You're maybe maybe Luke's father's brain was embedded into R two D two, which is one of the <laughs> theories apparently out there on the internet. I love that. Speaking of the internet, we are on Twitter and we're on Facebook. The Twitter's a new thing. Follow us at Jedi Alliance SK, and you can also um, uh, you Facebook. Can, you can also go to the Facebook page, which is the uh, Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network. Uh, last week we had kind of an unhinged show with Mike Black doing toys. We had a great time. It was amazing. Sorry the- for all those I iTunes listeners yeah. and the podcast that couldn't see any of it. <laughs> this week, though, I feel you've got some energy going. Uh, we all hung out tonight, last night, watching Rebels together, mm-hmm. so we've got a friendly vibe. This might be a, a show that... Team bonding. It goes into hyperspace. Uh, but we've got a great guest, but first, let's oh, we're, let's talk about Duel of Fates last week, because because we're delving into theories this week, we're going to skip Duel of the Fates. Yes. Uh, and bring a great debate to you next week. But last week, we had a pretty interesting one about mailway figures. Now, I had never heard of what the mailway figures were, but apparently there were three that were um, we were discussing. Which was the better mailaway? If you could just mail away for one, which one would it be? Would it be Boba Fett with his didn't work missile rocket launcher and now it does? Anakin, and this was the original Anakin that we mm-hmm. saw before he was digitally taken over uh, and had his face invaded yeah. by... Uh, Hayden Christian. It was a Sebastian Shaw version. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, it was the Emperor. And the Emperor kind of looked like he'd got his long legged collots out and he was about to show us a little bit of ankle with his stuff. Cool. <laughs> there you go. And we are looking through all the pictures. Oh, we're going through. Right there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> this is JT trying to figure out. <laughs> We've got a nice doing, desktop here. You're doing such a good job, kiddo. So good. Welcome back from vacation, JT, by the way. How was it? Did you have fun? Two thumbs up. He's giving us. That's a good sign. That's a good vacation. Good. So fun. who was the big winner? Now, I should point out, I saw some comments on YouTube. I'm very aware that there was the mail order campaign in uh, 1977. We didn't factor that one into this because we wanted to talk about the single mail away figures. So there were several other mail away figures to choose from as Star Wars fans throughout the run of the Kenner toys. But these are the three most prominent. So... What did our fans say? Well, the least popular was Anakin, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, he kind of fell considerably behind. Um, but you know what? He had a few supporters. Stephen Summers said, I would have chosen Boba as a kid, but I have to go with Anakin now because it's the original non Hayden face. Come on! Coming in in second place was the Emperor. Okay. He had a few likes as well. Matthew said, you know what? You could buy Boba Fett. I recall the Emperor and Anakin were only mail order. It's the original Anakin, the pre-prequel. That being said, I still have to go with the Emperor. Good. 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 Adam Rowan said the Emperor would have to be my pick. Being able to reenact the scene of him dying at the end of Return of the Jedi would make my journey to the dark side complete. Now, Adam, would you reenact it with the added in? No. <laughs> I hope not. So that means the most popular of the mail away figures was, of course, Boba Fett. He uh, was like pretty much three times more than Anakin and double yeah, the Emperor. That's so some big numbers. Head and head and shoulders above. Uh, Roman was like, "Yeah, Boba Fett just gives me an instant feeling to go up and go and pick up that toy." Why? Well, it's much more vibrant in terms of the color and has more accessories than the other two toys. Example: the gun and the rocket. So, in conclusion, if I had to go with the greatest bounty hunter, the galaxy, I will have to go. Sorry, with the greatest bounty hunter the galaxy has ever seen. Ever seen. Uh, I like that. And, you know, Boba Fett, we know, is a very popular character. We thought he'd uh, defeat Darth Maul in that contest. 
contest he didn't over the Best Assassin, but Best Figure, it's yes. a good consolation prize for you, Mr. Fett. And apparently it helped that he had a helmet on because a lot of people were saying that the faces were just a little bit too distorted back then with the Kenner yeah. figurines. It's like, that doesn't look like anyone, really. Yeah, uh, Han Solo had kind of a round, flat face, and, and Luke uh, just kind of had uh, blank with two little dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So not like what it a- is now. With the Black Series stuff, which is why it's great to be a toy collector now and almost 40. <sighs> da dun dun da dun dun Hey! Mm. So let's get our guest on for today's show. Right. She's amazing. We did watch Star Wars Rebels together, and we'll be touching upon that. Uh, mm. she's, just, she's, she's wearing a Star Wars shirt right now, so you know she must be a fan. That's right. Yeah, proof. She is the editor. Oh. Oh, you're in an empire yourself. Oh, wow! <laughs> She is the managing editor of uh, Offbeat Home, Offbeat Bride. It's collectively called the Offbeat Empire. Megan Finling. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Alternatively known as uh, my counterpart with the purple mm-hmm. for the pink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love being the pastel sur- girls. I love being surrounded. I'm the, the regular boring conservative guy in this like uh, fun party pastel picture. Pastel sandwich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. it. Sounds delicious. Let's talk a little bit about your job because uh, we recently posted something on our Facebook page, which you can search the Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network. Uh, there were wedding invitations that were done, yes. very heavily influenced by Star Wars. Tell us about those. There were uh, classy Star Wars invitations for a more mm. civilized wedding. Uh, they were one of our, our readers, one of our uh, Offbeat Bride Tribe members, and her husband are Star Wars fans, and he's Empire, and she's a rebel. So when they get married, they make really classy, gorgeous wedding invitations, of course, with you the two not symbols. Kiss the bride. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'll never tell you. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. Well, that's fun. And you're a big Star Wars fan yourself? I am. Yeah, absolutely. That's why uh, they, they picked you to, to cover a lot of those Star Wars weddings, too. And I know you recently crashed. I crashed one, You yes. crashed a pretty yeah. spectacular Star Wars wedding. At the Jim Henson, uh, yeah, movie lot. Mm-hmm. What was that like? Um, amazing. I got drunk and spanked by a stormtrooper. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 let me crash your weddings, guys. I'm going to be incredibly inappropriate. I swear that's on my long, long list of things I want to happen in my life before oh, I die. He spanked me with a stormtrooper-shaped spatula. I forgot yeah. to like. We got really meta with it. Yeah, there was a, a one picture came across your Instagram feed. It was like you doing things unspeakable to a stormtrooper, like in this like twerking kind of way. Oh yeah, it was, I was Miley Cyrus. Yeah, thing. it was it was that time of that when that Storm was when that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, it was, and you weren't invited to this wedding. No, I you, mean, technically, I was invited. I mean, they said I could come. Right. But it's, they, they, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah we should catch up for lunch sometime. Megan from Offbeat Bride, oh my gosh, come to our wedding. Please don't twerk on a stormtrooper was never said. Right. So, Meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tongue out and everything. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's get into the top five questions. Yeah. These are the Star okay. Wars questions we ask all of our diehard Star Wars guests that are on the panel. The first question is, tell us about your first time. Oh, my first time was with my uh, one of my first boyfriends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so same. Oh, we're still oh, talking Star about Star Wars. Oh, 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 no, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, he, he told me that I would love oh, Star Wars, here. and he forced me to watch it, and it was amazing. And then I never watched it again until one of my best friends in college was like, "Oh, where did the Star Wars VHS come from?" I was like, "Ah, my boyfriend gave it to me." And so then we started the tradition of watching all the Star Wars episodes while drinking champagne. Wow. Yeah. That's a good that wish. was our thing. Classy yeah, Star Wars. And Star Wars. It was classy. Yeah. So exactly. what, what was the time period between the first time you saw it and then starting to drink it, drink and watch? About or? four, three, three or four years. Three or four years. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of came. Yeah, about three years. So you weren't like a little five-year-old kid watching no, it. No, so, But I, I kind of like that perspective because I'm someone who was a kid. Like, I like the Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You kind of had some functioning adult yeah, thoughts I mean, in your head when you were like, Oh, I like this. This is awesome. Yeah. That's interesting because I'm obsessed with The Princess Bride. I think it's one of the mm-hmm. other greatest movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had got my roommate who collected He Man figurines. He was a bigger geek than I was. And I was like, Watch The Princess Bride. He lasted halfway through it before he went, What is this crap? And I think it's because he didn't watch it as a kid as and a grow kid. up with yeah. it. And have those mm-hmm. feelings about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's Although, the best bloody movie, guys. My, par- my dad loves Princess Bride. And he watched it as a full grown adult man. Because it's a good movie. Yeah, it is a great movie. <laughs> so, as you know. You wish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, we had a lot of Princess Bride weddings on our website, too, but well, that's not, it's not yeah. about me. It's not about me today. Uh, of well, the, it's about me right now. Yeah, yeah right now it is. <laughs> uh, of all the movies, what is your favorite one? Uh, okay, my favorite one, this was really hard, and I had to, like, sit and, like, You had to do notes. Think. Yeah, yeah had you, to would, be, you have an Excel be, spreadsheet I, there. I do, because I don't want to get nervous and forget. Um, so I thought it was A New Hope, but actually it's Empire Strikes Back. Oh, here we go. Because you get Yoda, <laughs> and you get the I Know moment. You love the I Know moment. I love the I Know moment. I you know. love it too. <laughs> I know. We talked about this at dinner last night. You <laughs> yeah. both really love it. Why do you like the I know moment? It's just, 
incredibly sexy. Okay. And I know I like knowing the story, the original story that it was like, I know I've always loved you too, blah, 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 long drawn out. Yeah. And I love it when actors just take scenes, take especially, control. yeah, especially. Mm. But you can only do it. I think it's only really credible when those two do it. Like, I mean, yeah. for example, if someone was like, hey, Maud, you're awesome. And I turn around and go, I know. It's like, wow, you're an asshole. <laughs> Not at all. I'd be like, Really? I like this girl. You can't claim well, compliments like that. Yes, you can. <laughs> Watch me. I'm going to give it the Han effect every time. I'll try it for a week and yeah, see, how I, yeah. you know, see how it goes. Yeah. I'm going to try that in my dating life, and I'll, t- I'll let you know how far it doesn't go. <laughs> All right, the second question after talking about your favorite movie and why is your favorite character? Okay, my favorite character is here with us now. It's Salacious B. Crumb. <laughs> and you used the middle initial, which is why I know we're friends. Salacious B. Crumb. Absolutely, absolutely. You... You really like this guy. I love this guy. He's so annoying. He's, he's my spirit animal. What? Because, <laughs> she's so just, annoying. I'm just like him. Oh. A little funky creature who sits off to the side and giggles maniacally with a sadistic sense of humor. And that's kind of like what I am to Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, well, I am. Like, I'm like I am. Salacious to your, I am to your scale Java. to Jabba. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, no yeah you throw whiskey in Salacious's hands and it is kind of you at a party. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nine yeah. on a droid's head. Yeah. We have been talking about uh, impersonations and someone has has suggested that Salacious B. Crumb get a get a mention. Yeah. Do you want to have the honors of trying? I that? don't even want to compete with your I'm impressions. Not. <laughs> no, that was me saying I don't know what Power droid. No, you'll, oh. you'll, 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 the laugh will come up soon, like naturally. Okay. Okay. It's just All how right. I laugh sometimes. So Salacious, I like that, that. We've definitely never had a Salacious B. Crumb is the answer. No, no, you haven't. I know. And you know what? There needs to be more Salacious merchandise. Maybe we get a nice Salacious shirt for you. I think it should be a um, uh, an adverb. No, what is it? What's the, <laughs> the describing word? An adjective? adjective? Yes! There you oh. go. <laughs> Far out, man. I tell you what, it's, every time every, it's been every that kind since of I've day. dyed my hair pink, it's <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, adjective, don't you reckon? That's, That's such a salacious looking. Well, yeah, it's well, kind of. It kind of salacious. Kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, salacious. A salacious mm-hmm. be crumb looking ATSD. Mm-hmm. Mm, I want to. I want to crumb. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> no, this is not. not no. Favorite quote. Okay. Next question. <laughs> Star Wars quote that you find yourself using in day to day conversation. Okay, it's not my favorite quote, but it's something that I use all the time. And in fact, I think I used it last night with you. Uh, oh. When I'm in the car with that guy I married, and we see a cop rolling by, we tell each other to fly casual. Fly oh, casual. Yeah, because oh, if you're like, like oh, there's a cop. You're like, whoa, oh, oh, duh. But if you're like, yo, fly casual. We nice. just know. So you, yeah. you, you and your husband communicate via Star Wars quotes. That's very <laughs> sexy. That's oh, very oh, good. I, yeah. That's why oh. I think the I know thing is hot. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Fly casual. Fly I don't casual. know, Chewie. Fly casual. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It's our everyday Star Wars thing. I like force that. power. Yeah. What okay. would be your favorite force power? Is it one that already exists or is it one that you make up? I'm game for both if you got both. Okay. Well, I like to see someone make up a force power. Hey, this is our theories episode. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I've got like two answers for this. One is the one that I would want because I'm a lazy, lazy jerk. And mm. I just want... Yep, yeah, absolutely. Like every time I'm sick, I'm like, why don't I have the force? <laughs> I really want a cup of tea. Um, and your and husband then... just says fly casual. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one that I think that I do do have is my ability to sense crazy my wow. crazy <laughs> force powers are strong I crazy can, dar yeah crazy dar this is, is that a force power the crazy force yeah I get, if you can sense life. it yeah i can sense it you could oh, be there it's like i, I feel a disturbance crazy. in the force and then this chick walks in going, yeah. oh my god yeah. i'm a freaking sword of god You're yeah like, that's and i knew it i knew it was gonna easy. happen mm-hmm. i felt okay. it the so you created feel one. the crazy wafting from you yeah i think they taught that at the the jedi temple yoda gather around younglings that's Yoda's voice, apparently. He's a 1920s <laughs> yeah. bootlegger. Um, gather around, younglings. Thank we got ourselves a lesson Thank here. I never knew when he was young. He sounds really <laughs> annoying. Yeah. All right. And he um, speaks totally normally then. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. no backwards, no backwards grammar there. That must have happened when you got old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's like a form of Alzheimer's. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Theory. Yeah. yeah. Theory. He's starting to forget. I was going to say, next to segue is not theories. That would have been like, speaking of. Part theory. Um, <laughs> I do have one more question in the top oh, five, oh, though. Oh, God. What is it? Yeah. Okay. If, uh, if you had the chance, would you turn to the dark side of the force? I already work for an empire, oh. so obviously... I would. I'm part of the offbeat empire. So you're already there. I'm despite already there. your despite, Leia shirt. Despite me repping the rebels, but I did it for the theme of the show because what we'll be discussing. Rebel, rebels. I got uh, it. Yeah. Okay. I, so yeah, I still work for the empire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you kind of the Darth Vader of the offbeat empire, or are you more the Moff Jar Gerard, Governor Tarkin? I'm, I'm, TIE fighter pilot. I'm just you? one of those poor souls that gets force choked on. <laughs> oh, God, I'll do 
you it, whatever you Apologize saying. to your boss. Yeah, and... sorry, Ariel. Apology. Darth Ariel. <laughs> Apology accepted, Megan. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, you are, uh, you've passed the test here. Oh, I can stay. You can stay. Oh, okay. You can cool. stay. Awesome. Uh, by, by the name of Salacious B. Crumb, you can stay. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so now it's time on the show where we go into Renewed Hope, which is this week in Star Wars news. Now, usually Queen Amadala takes uh, reins and talks to her people, but this week do we have someone else? Yeah, um, someone on YouTube uh, actually complained that they didn't really like my Amadala voice. Yeah. So I just thought we'd throw a spanner in the works. We'll go take a trip to the spice market. Um, and I'm going to try a completely different person this time. Are you guys oh, ready? I, I'm game. Let's go. Pull in the hat. What are we going to do? I'm going to go and become the, the Senate. Pa- Senator Palpatine. Senator Palpatine. Yes, this is before he turns. Before completely. he turns. Well, he's technically still, in, yeah. you know, one with the dark side. But this yeah. is this is while he's doing his whole bipolar thing. And gotcha. Yeah, playing them, playing it safe. So yes, I sound really quite smart, but I have an overbite still. <laughs> Alrighty, here's our here are our stories. Is everybody ready? <laughs> I'm ready, Palpatine. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. For this. Okay. We can finally confirm that there will be a Boba Fett movie. Nice. Oh, cool. Thank you so much, Senator mm. Palpatine. That's pretty cool. Uh, look, this has been a rumor that's been going around for quite some time, but it is absolutely 100% confirmed. It's locked in and yeah. it's been approved and confirmed. And I have even spoken to the source who's confirmed it. Yeah. AMC's very own John Schnepp. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. And I read in an article on a Star Wars website very recently that it is him that has said, yes, absolutely. A Boba Fett movie is getting written. It's in the works. I can c- completely confirm this. I will never share my source, but it is very, very legitimate. Mm-hmm. Now, he says that it's going to be um, written by Lawrence Kasdan. Yeah. If you don't know who Lawrence Kasdan is, he's written Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. So this guy is a very, very clever, and he knows his stuff. Uh, the premise of the movie, though, is not going to be an origin movie because we've seen that. That was what Attack of the Clones was. That's mm-hmm. the whole Jenga, Bubba kind yeah. of deal, and we know what's going on there. This is more of a how he came to go from a boy to one of the most successful bounty hunters in the entire galaxy. No. Coming, coming of age transition story then. Mm, coming of age. Mm, okay. With jazz hands. No casting has been confirmed yet, but I'm really excited for that one. Uh, yeah, I, I love the fact that they're doing this Boba Fett movie. Kasdan is kind of J.J. Abrams' right-hand man right now, running a lot of things through the uh, Episode Seven factory. So it makes sense that he would get his hands on this very important, complicated character. I know they they don't know who's the director, Gareth Edwards, or all the, uh, the other guys, Josh Trank, they've been looking at all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, but are you excited, Megan, for Boba Fett to stand alone? No. No. You've no. got Fett regret. I don't like Boba Fett. Oh, I know. Serious is it something? Time. Is it some something he did to Salacious? <laughs> I know. Well, yes, actually, no. I just don't get it. I don't. I just. I okay. don't. This get it. movie could make you get this, it. This, yes, maybe this. Like if I see Boba Fett do, I don't know, doing something. Is that what you think? So yes. In the movies. Yes. I'm curious. Boba this is Fett great. I never stood out to me as somebody like he that. Does I hair everything. Yeah, died like a chump. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Them fighting true. words. Boba well, Fett we think, died we like think he jump. died. I mean, you know, oh, expanded yeah. universe, he crawls yeah, out, but yeah, we'll but see if that becomes I know, canon. I don't, I have uh, not explored the expanded universe. I'm like, oh, this guy shows up, doesn't really do much, dies like a chump, moving on. I never thought about him again. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, I love Boba Fett. He's the coolest guy ever. And I'm like, eh. it's because of his helmet. It's Look, because- he's even got like either a crab claw or a velociraptor's head on his helmet. He does. What is this? It's a little radio antenna, yeah. You know what? Direct this for me, okay? Okay, it's a crab hand. <laughs> Does it get Wi-Fi? Because that might be cool. <laughs> yeah, so if he gets Wi-Fi, yeah, he gets so Wi-Fi, all right. Yes. So I kind of like that perspective, though. Yeah, it's it's a, a little a different. Fan. Usually, people are tripping over their tongues that's, to express their love for I for Fed. Understand it? I, I'm like, I feel like I'm missing. I'm I'm gotta be missing something. Well, you know, you picked up on how great Salacious B. Crumb is, so oh, I don't know what you're. It's you're, obvious. Look at him, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the worst part is there's so many clever people watching this that every one of these is going to be made into a gift somehow. Yeah. And I never want to see that. Yeah. But you're very that clever. That face that you just made. What, what about you, Mud? you excited for a Boba Fett movie? Yes, I am. Okay. I think that this is a character. I think there's quite a few characters that have a chunk, like decades of uh, timeline that we can mm-hmm. explore. And this is one mm-hmm. of them. Obi-Wan, um, after he left Luke uh, on Tatooine, yeah. what he did then, was yeah. he the old hobo Ben or did he kind of do more stuff? Right. I mean, what I'm reading in A New Dawn is that he kind of was AWOL. Disappeared, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what happened. Anyway, those sorts of things. Okay. Uh, story number two. Ready? I'm ready. Ooh, do the voice. Where? 
where is oh, I've got love, love, lost it. the dark side of the fall. <laughs> where episode seven is at. John Williams is getting ready and Carrie Fisher was spotted back in LA. This is an exclusive. We have an exclusive, people. Are you ready? John Williams is set to start composing for episode seven. He's got two weeks before that starts. So in That's two awesome. in two weeks' time, he will have the footage. Yeah. That he needs to write the music for. I think people keep forgetting that composers don't just come out with some ditty tracks. Yeah. They suit mm -hmm. the footage. Mm -hmm. I think Ep 7's nearly done. Yeah, I think we're getting there. I think that's what's happening. Absolutely. Right now. And that, of course, we know Williams is back. So this is his final, maybe his big last hurrah to really make an impact with something new. And, and, and I'm so glad he's back. No one else could do Star Wars. No. He is. Star Wars yeah. and Raiders and Jaws and et cetera. But, and you all know. that stuff. Yeah, and I'm looking at the picture right now. You know, Jurassic <laughs> Park, all the great stuff he's done. E.T., everything. Oh, Superman. Um, it goes on and on and on. So excited, but I'm really excited. This kind of gets me geeked up that that means he's there's enough of it done. Mm -hmm. Yep. That. I'm so excited. I mean, I, I want to know how much he's recycling. Like, I do love hearing, da, 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 mm -hmm. you know, when entering like a nice landscape on Tatooine or whatever it is. Yeah. So I, I want to know if he's going to keep borrowing from that or are there going to be, is there going to be a new Jewel of the Fates? Is there going to be a new kind of like, you know, intense music yeah. soundtrack that we're going to gain from this? Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. You excited? You got to uh, sell the single. <laughs> you, you, you want Williams to craft a single? <laughs> Off of this one, yes, a Duel yeah. of Fate song there. I mean, uh, what uh, Megan, does it excite you knowing that that pretty much the movie's done? Absolutely. As a fan? Yeah, I need to cozy up to my like favorite classical musicians and be like, hey, what's up? Recording anything cool? Yeah? Yeah? Can I come and watch? Can you come watch? <laughs> Can I come and watch? Yeah. Oh my gosh, to be a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that would be amazing. Uh, the exclusive that I have, though, is that Carrie Fisher has been spotted back in L.A., by none other than my producer at thehothits.com. Nice. Yep, my radio producer <laughs> ran into Carrie Fisher at a dog Is grooming a dog? parlor. She has a French bulldog oh called Gary. Oh, hi, Gary. She called her dog Gary, That's a great name for Gary, him. I want you to. Anyway, <laughs> um, apparently this is a really funny story. He, they were both lining up to get their dogs back, and he was like, "Hello, Gary. How are you?" Said she looked very tired. Sure. Very tired, which makes me again think that the filming has wrapped and it's all over. Yeah. Um, but also, my producer just happened to be been holding his Halloween costume for his dog. He has a husky, and he's going to turn his husky into a bantha. And oh, on it, there nice. is a little Tuscan Raider yeah. figurine. Oh. And there's Carrie going, that's awesome. <laughs> Bonding moment right there. So she's back in town. I think wow. she's back here. Mm. The dog's getting groomed. Yeah, I have a feeling she's costume. not going back to London. And, and that, of course, opens up a lot of speculation on, well, is her character dead? Is, is the filming still going and she's been sent back? Was she wrapped early? With all that kind of stuff. So let it begin, the speculation. I'm also looking forward to uh, Star Wars trying to explain to everyone how plastic surgery occurs in the outer realms. Hey, you know, it, it, if you read it's New Dawn, we're going to review it next week. There, That main villain, Vidian, he has extensive plastic surgery done. So there's Just somewhere they can do it. a cyborg, a decal. Yeah. Well, yeah. But okay. all right, they'll explain it maybe. All right. That's just me being a little space bit alters, facetious. Space alters your face a lot. Right. Yeah. You know, space. The suction of it. Yeah. It's, you know, science. Or I could just stop being a little bitch. Yeah. That's it. That's There's, it. That. Okay. There's that. There's <laughs> that. Right. Uh, story number three. Hello, how do you say his last name? James Lucino. Is it Lucino? I'm, I'm going like to go with Luciano. Lu Luciano. Yeah, say it like that. James Lucino. Okay. You can do that, but you can do La Chan, though, if you want. I just had to confirm because obviously Senator Palpatine can't screw that up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> James Lucino's newest novel, Star Wars Tarkin, <laughs> will follow the franchise by kicking the story off with an opening crawl. What does an opening crawl mean? If you don't stop me, then I won't stop the music. We'll go on and on. Um, this is the newest book. It is by James Lucino. Mm -hmm. you, you may have heard of him because he did the Dark Plagueis yeah. books. He's back again. This is canon. November 4th is when you can read it. And obviously it cover, covers, sorry, General Tarkin's whole transition and how he became who he was. Uh, if you want to know what the crawl reads as, it's actually available online. So if you Google that one, mm. you can watch it. How fun is that? Off. Yeah, this is doing a visual version of it. It's funny to talk, though. Um, James recently did an interview 
and they asked him the common questions of the whole expanded universe and canon. And these are his responses. So when talking about the conflicts of the expanded universe, what he can borrow from, what's going, like what stands, what doesn't, he says, I chose not to, to really reference too much of the expanded universe material only because of the setting of the story, but it was still there. Um, it was still there to pick and choose from. I think going forward, what may happen is that you may see writers writing around some of that older material that's now classified as legends, writing around it, rather than trying to overwrite it. And then when we asked um, the canon, the canon that's uh, official mm. now and some things that may not be classified as official anymore and may dissipate into the, the universe, he says, I suppose there's some logic to that form from a marketing point of view, but I worry about alienating the fans and readers who have been with this franchise for however long it's been because it's a large group and they are very loyal. Yeah, that's that right. scares me a little bit because that means Darth Plagueis might not be officially canon. And he wrote two other great books, uh, Labyrinth of Evil and, and Dark Lord, The Rise of, of Lord Vader, Darth Vader, which is packaged in the Dark Lord trilogy, which is the Revenge of the Sith novelization, which is an equally as good book. Uh, but he didn't write that. He wrote the other two. And those are two really good books. He's a great Star Wars writer. There's a lot of stuff in there. The, the Dark Lord, The Rise of uh, Darth Vader book, it goes into him learning to walk four weeks after he becomes Darth That's Vader. That's right, Frank and Vader. Uh, kind of pays that off a little bit, and it and it it really kind of filled in some details. If that doesn't count, I think that's what he's kind of referencing here. I think it's almost like if like this whole ah oh, that's not canon anymore. It's like Disney walks up to him with his like manuscript that he's poured his whole mm -hmm. soul into, and they just rip it up, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Soz, buddy." Yeah, that's and that's and that's kind of a fear. Now, Megan, I know you're not a a big expanded universe fan. We talked about this. That's but I like your perspective as someone who's just a film girl. Right. Governor Tarkin, A New Hope. Uh, do you want to learn about that guy? Are you excited about this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'll I'll read it and I'll tell you. Yeah, that's exactly how I'm going to learn about it. You know, I <laughs> I'm not going to read it. I'm not, but. But does that, and, and I know you're you're a, you're a big reader. You've read all the Game of Thrones books. We mm -hmm. talk about that. So I know you maybe you won't dive into the Star Wars books. But does that concept of all right, there's this is a side character. Now what's no, his backstory? I'm, I'm enjoying all the exploring all the side characters. I yeah. may not be a fan of Boba Fett, but like, hey, give me a story. Maybe I will be. You know, right. like I like diving into. Well, we were talking about the the kind of the construct of the Death Star and who works on That's it, right. and we were like. What's Darth Vader's role? I mean, we know General <laughs> yeah. Tarkin is a general, <laughs> yeah. and he tells Darth what to do. Yeah. yeah. But, like, what is Darth Vader? Yeah. yeah. I, what, what would it say on his business card? I'm telling you, Darth Vader GSD gets Get, shit done. Yeah. He gets shit done. Excuse yeah, but, me, that, but that's the acronym. That's <laughs> <laughs> still... Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That was. I actually got that real text from her one day. What is Darth Vader's actual job? I was like, uh, director of operations? I, was, I don't know. I Head of programming? I was trying to compare <laughs> my boss to me, and I was like, you know, I have to please, you know, the what? The, the dark overlord of the empire? Yeah. He's not an overlord. Because it is very confronting. There's more lords over him, so. Yeah. I wanna, like when he answers to other people, when yeah. Tarkin's like, stop that. Yeah. He's, yeah. And he's like, oh, i got to let yeah. him go because my boss told me. He's somebody's boy. I, I think that we should put that out to our fans on oh, Facebook and yes. Twitter. Please tell me. Uh, at Jedi Alliance SK, hashtag Jedi Alliance, and also on, on the Facebook page. Name Darth Vader's actual job. Be creative. Yeah. Give what? us his business card. Give us his business card. What is what is he? What is Lord he? Vader, the CEO of, of Darthness. <laughs> the Lord of Darthness. Lord of Darthness. That's, mine. That's his, mine. His royal darkness. Uh, that's right. yeah. So but I I'm definitely I'm looking forward to the Tarkin book. Yeah. Maybe more than I was looking forward to New Dawn, which I just finished. I'm halfway through it. I yeah. cracked out about 30 chapters Good over the stuff. weekend. And we're going to review New Dawn next week with Christian Harloff coming yeah. on the show. I have a little Star Wars book club. And I've just seen it sitting on your bedside table. Yep. So that's I don't know why you're in my room. but <laughs> um, <laughs> JT is laughing back there. What's I know, it's what made me laugh. <laughs> So let's move things on to theories. This is uh, the, the part of this particular show that we're really going to focus mm. on. These are kind of... You know, a, a different. What was my tweet that I did, which I thought was quite clever? I don't know. I don't. Well, different you put theories. Out, oh, different theories. Conspiracy <laughs> Char theories. Schemes. Character, schemes. Right. Schemes. Character developments. Things that you think may have happened that no one's really spoken about, but it just makes sense. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of those that you guys have written in on our Facebook page, which is uh, by searching Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network. If you haven't given that a like, we are close to 2,000. And at 2,000, we get you back on the show. Yeah. Um, should we go through some of these theories? Absolutely. I'm excited to delve into the Star Wars. doesn't have as many of these theories out and about and as open as, say, a Game of Thrones, a Song of Ice and Fire franchise type of thing, uh, which fuels, I think, George R. R. Martin's writing. Is what, what theories can I create that people uncover? We spent 20 minutes talking about Jon Snow's parents. Yeah, at, parents. at dinner. Uh, 
R, spoiler R, alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> R plus L equals J. Uh, J. Um, but um, I th- would like to see more of this talked about in Star Wars, so I'm excited. Let's yep. delve in. What do we got? All right, so the one that got 14 likes, because I asked you guys to kind of like the ones that you agreed with or wanted to hear mm. more about, uh, thanks to Sean Thurston. Who did this one? He said, uh, I just read a fan theory about Boba Fett being the one that killed Uncle Owen, Aunt Beru, and the Jawas while tracking down RTG2 and three, C3PO. Mm-hmm. I think the Stormtroopers killed the Jawas okay. because they lined up the um, yeah. Tusken Raider tracks uh, not in a single file. So I think that that was an oversight that Stormtroopers would have made, not Boba Fett. Right. But let's think back to Tatooine at their house and how they were found. Yeah. They were fried. They were on the ground as if they were crawling away and they were burnt to a crisp. That yeah. is a flamethrower. Smoke. There was fire. That's a bomb. Yeah. That's a that's that's not what a stormtrooper can do with an uncivilized blaster. And beyond just saying that, well, how they died or how that looked like they died, it factors in. The, th- the thought is, well, Boba Fett was there. He He's, was on oh, Tatooine, Tatooine at the time. Yeah. Because in the, uh, well, now extended footage, but original footage, when Jabba and Han have their weird confrontation at the landing bay, Boba Fett is there. So he's at the scene of the crime. Then it factors in more, I'm sure you remember in your favorite movie, Empire Strikes Back. What does Vader say to Boba Fett? What was this, a quiz now? Yeah, it's a quiz. I need him alive. There I need him alive. He's no, no good. No disintegrations. He's no good to me dead, but the disintegrations, which means he is an expert at obliviating. Mm-hmm. And that maybe some subtext of Vader going, remember what you did last time, don't do that again. But they needed to die, though. Well, well, Vader's like, hey, you can kill them. Just don't, don't, just don't fry them to a crisp. Yeah, right, right. But that's what he was saying. Vader said, I, I didn't want Uncle Owen and those, you know, I knew those people and you killed them. Yeah. Uh, that's what the subtext is. So he's telling Boba Fett, don't do that again. Just go get Han. Don't, don't kill him don't like you did. Need him extra crispy. Right. I just, yeah. <laughs> right. So what? how plausible do you think this theory is? Very. Very. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah? There's evidence in the movies. I'm with you. Exactly. Like I'm with you on this one. The yes. crime scene. You're on this one. On this one. The placement of the culprit. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the dialogue. That's a trifecta. <laughs> dun dun. Guilty. That's a, it's a triforce. It's a Zelda triforce of, of guilt. Let's do that. That's all she needs. Hey, I think it... It was power, courage, and wisdom behind that attack. And may, hey, maybe this standalone movie will shed some light. <gasps> He'll get the mission. Maybe Joel Edgerton comes Ooh. back, he puts some makeup on him and make him look a little older, and then you kill him he off in a stand He a little older. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been, t- what, 12, 13 years? Yeah, right. There you go. All right, there you go. And and the Tatooine son ages you in weird ways. Two sons. Two case. sons. Double the damage. Double there the damage. <laughs> which is why Obi-Wan goes from like a <laughs> mid-30s <laughs> Scottish <laughs> guy to a Too very long. old 65-year-old yep. British guy. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens. So yeah, so you're on board for this one then? Yeah, I'm on for board this for this one. one. Yes. Maybe not others. Yeah, maybe not. Let's get to those. All yeah. right, Freddie Daniels. He yeah. says, I heard a theory where the Emperor didn't die after being thrown by Vader. Does anyone think this could be legit? Maybe he's still alive and keeping the Sith ways alive mm. as well. Sean actually jumped in on that and said, I read about this theory also, but I don't agree with it. While we didn't actually see the Emperor die, we did see the effect of him being thrown into the reactor. There was that explosion that caused a vacuum and Vader had to brace himself from getting pulled in as well. Although if he did manage to survive, I would agree that he would have plenty of time to escape before the Death Star exploded. Hmm. Guys, hmm. I have heard rumors that the Emperor hasn't died and he will be a feature in 7, 8, 9. Spoiler! Well, Sorry. That's this a, doesn't work when you say that. It's not so much a, a spoiler as it is a prediction or, yeah, or theory. Sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, dude, the Kermit hands can work here um, for fail. spoilers. Um, look, I personally don't want this to be true. I want him to be dead. Uh, if he shows up in Ep Seven, I want it to be with Did a whole. Did Maul die when he fell down without his legs? No. No, they exactly. But I believe Palpatine blew up, and that's why that evil energy came flying. Yeah, out. he blew up. He blew up the whole Sith, and it all got bigger. And yeah. he's still reigning. But he's, you know, he, if he could still reign in the Senate with a deformed face, looking like a skilled mullet fish thing. <laughs> skilled, <laughs> skilled, skilled mullet fish I thing. I think yeah. I combined a couple of words. skilleted. Uh, no, uh, mullet never, no. I, no. I don't know. Like I it. just heard mullet and fish. I heard a mullet fish too. Maybe, no. Megan, would you buy into this theory more if it was a case of the Emperor is dead, became a spirit ghost, but much like, say, a, a Lord of the Rings kind of Mordor thing, he's coming back into power like Saruman. Yeah. That's because it's happened before. Saruman, Saruman, whichever In one it is. Yes. So maybe Saruman. Sauron? Sa- say ceremony? Yeah. Uh, I. <sighs> Salacious. I'm not a fan of no. the, like somebody actually didn't die. I'm not either. Because like we're doing that now with Boba Fett too. Okay, great. 
Whatever. Nobody dies. Nobody dies. Nobody he can kill anybody. He knew that he was the only person on the, in the whole galactic empire yeah. that knew how to f- cheat death. After, I, mm. Well, again, mm. yeah, you're right. Mm. He knew to That's have good him point. not die. He learned from Plagueis. Yeah. How he, to, if he was like, he'd be like, Activate Sith powers. Activate not I, yeah, dying I, powers. I, I think that's what he has to say. Yeah, it's okay, like a bug. Okay. Um, no, no, that's a great point. That a good point. Yeah. That's okay. a great point okay. because he spent his whole life learning from Plagueis, and then after killing Plagueis, mastering the craft. So yeah, okay, I, I could see that if that's going to be the justification they use. Babatine has not died. That's my theory. Okay. Uh, we're moving over to Twitter, and if you mm-hmm. are following at Jedi Alliance SK, you can be a part of that conversation. We have Brock Rowe, who has said Palpatine said that Plagueis originated metachlorian manipulation for the Chosen One. Now, this means, you know how like the Force is like a, it's just yeah. a part of, I don't know, who did a really, Freddy in the Rebels, which we'll talk about, did a really yeah. good ex- explanation of the Force, but there's metachlorians kind of everywhere, and whoever has a high metachlorian count um, becomes a Jedi. They're saying that Plagueis and I think even Palpatine has established um, a way to manipulate the Metachlorians to put them and concentrate them into one person. And mm-hmm. that's who became the chosen one, which was Anakin. So yep. they created him. Now, I think that this is also quite true because we know that Shmi said there was no father. Yeah. She, this, Anakin immaculate was an conception. immaculate conception. Yeah. When I was in the theater scene, Phantom Menace, and it happened, we all yelled, Darth Vader's Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like collectively as an audience. Uh, I oh, think wow. this one is more than plausible. I think it's almost can, canon. Uh, because in Revenge of the Sith, I'm sure you remember, you love Revenge of the Sith. No, I don't. Okay. I've blocked all that from When Revenge. Anakin and, oh, so and Palpatine have that scene, and have, has anyone told you of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? That's canon. The book, whether or not it's canon or not, I don't know. We'll see. Lucino's book, Plagueis, goes into that. And I think, without a doubt, they're saying... Hey, by the way, Palpatine saying, I created you. You're mine. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely think that's true, and I think maybe that could be explored more. Maybe not in Ep 7, 8, or 9, but maybe in a comic book, maybe the in a book. The fact that Anakin had a Metachlorian count that was so, so off the charts. So much more yeah. than Yoda. Yeah. 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 I think right. that that can only be a manifestation mm-hmm. that was done mm-hmm. through, not the means of the Force. Through science. Yeah, yeah. Or through power. We can build it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. And he created a clone army. Mm-hmm. Why can't Why he can create he a Jedi one guy army? Super awesome at being a Jedi. I there love you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that one, Brock, is very plausible. I, I almost consider it canon. Uh, I've got one here from both Eric and Mick. They kind of say the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. Trying to avoid Ep7 news. Mm-hmm. But this is a theory. Um, and that is that. Um, the Emperor is back, and his apprentice is going to be Luke Skywalker. Who's mm. Luke Skywalker? He's evil Luke that was created from his <laughs> decapitated arm. So they oh, used really? his arm to create, you know, like in the fifth element, all yeah. they yeah, had right. was her arm. arm. Yeah, just and they yeah. built it. Yeah. Created her from that. So yeah. they, they make another. So there's like, it's kind of like real Link and Shadow Link for all my gamers. Um, there's going to be the bad Luke and the good Luke, Luke, and they can oh. face off against each other. Dark Luke. No? I'm telling you, if that shows up in the theater in December 2015, I'm I might get up and leave the theater. Yeah, Luke's got cyborg Luke. I might go with you again. No, yeah, no. His only his arm is real. The rest is cyborg. I don't want to see. I am your arm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No. I don't. That's impossible. <laughs> no, it's not. No. I left it behind. No. <laughs> I just picked it up and built from There's it. been a lot of things going around lately that we're hearing, oh, Luke's the bad guy. Luke's the bad mm-hmm. guy. Luke's the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Again, not spoilers. Mm-hmm. This is open speculation now, folks. Rumors filter out. But no one's really confirmed that. Um, but would you want to see Luke as the bad guy at this point? Like father, like son action? <gasps> mm. See what I mean? And, uh, and I also, didn't. I always did said I wouldn't be like my father. Oh, now I am. Yeah, that's what they say when you get older, you just kind of become like your parents. Yeah. And there's nothing you can really do about it. And then you sometimes you just become a dark, you know, a dark Sith Lord. See the Lord. battle. Yeah. The battle's like a mirror yeah. kind of but image, and he's like, I know all of your moves because I am you. Yeah. <laughs> no! I just Again, think there's a the lot nose. more places to take the story than, than that, to see yeah. evil mm-hmm. Luke. But I agree. so you're leaving the theater with me. I mean, I mean you and I were Look, out now. I'm there. We're going back to your bedroom for some reason. I'm like, that's amazing. He's fighting his own head. Let me clarify. If Luke. If Luke is bad or has a bad streak, I'm not leaving the theater. Let's be honest, I'm not leaving the He's theater regardless. I'm, uh, a little Maybe hyper- the seventh hyperbole. time you watch the movie, yeah. then you'll, like, out of protest leave. Little, you know, little, like, pause. I'm being a little epitome of hyperbole here for my Brian Regan fans. But um, I, 
I just don't want to see two Lukes. I don't want to see evil Luke and good Luke fighting at the... the uh, it's like a bad 1960s Star Trek episode. Nope. It's also like a really cool 90s video game. Yeah. Which is I'm on board. Actually, wait, maybe now I'm, now, now I'm on Monster. Yeah, you yeah, two with your pastel now. hair. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> stick, stick around and watch Clone Luke. It happens. Uh, mm-hmm. One last one we're going to tackle. Stan Wilkes has said, I think R2-D2 is a secret rebel spy. He didn't have his memory deleted in Revenge of the Sith. And in the start of Episode 7, Leia... I th- hold on, sorry. Four. Someone can't read Roman numerals. In the uh, start of episode four, Leia doesn't have the secret plans. R2 does. She just sends it along to Obi-Wan. So if JJ could explore this a little bit further, then it would be awesome. You're going to go one more from that and say not only R2 is a rebel spy, but so is Chewie. The mighty Chewbacca. I, uh, I love this theory going around. It's another one of those. Look, we were talking about mm-hmm. it at lunch here. What would you say this theory really is? It's just a cover up. For the, the, the uh, what are they called? Uh when things aren't the same continuity well, yes it's Con- a continuity thing i, I can't read roman she said it a lot better no words <laughs> um yes to cover up continuity issues, issues created yeah. by george mm-hmm. lucas himself yeah uh he did a lot of that with um <laughs> with a lot yeah of someone that. was like why in a new hope then does uncle owen look at c-3po and not recognize mm-hmm. the droid he's had for like 10 mm-hmm. years with his father it's getting older yeah getting older. um yes chewbacca and Yoda had uh, they worked together in, in Revenge of the Sith uh, during Order sixty six. Yoda cuts off the the clone troopers' heads, and uh, T- Tarful and Chewbacca take him to safety. Yep, meaning Chewbacca was pretty high up. It wasn't just some like Tarful going, "Hey, you Chewie, come with me." No, he was someone of importance. And Yoda and said, knew all about Order sixty six and knew all of what was going on. He with knew what was going on. Yeah. So, flash forward to New Hope. Yeah, we learned at the end. I've listed it as one of my favorite moments of the prequels. Is when you learned that. R2 didn't have his memory wiped, which meant the whole time he knew everything and he just shut his mouth. So he's, <laughs> R2's got the plans. I like it when droids shut them up. Yeah, shut your mouth. R2's right. got the plans. Right. He knows where to go find. Like, no, get in here, 3PO. We're taking this escape pod and we're going to go find this hermit. Mm-hmm. Why would he know that? Because he knows everything. Uh, the theory then says even further when Obi-Wan says, because this is always kind of like people are like, why did he say that in A New Hope? When Obi-Wan says, I don't seem to recall owning a droid, the theory actually says that's Kenobi going, hey, shut up. Mm. Shut up about it. <laughs> Dude, we have a plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, there's that. And yeah. then in the meantime, they go find, they go to Moss Eisley Cantina. It's remembered more for meeting Han Solo. But what happens first? You were saying that Obi-Wan was talking to Chewie. He went right up to Chewie. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, here's my, I met uh, this guy, Chewbacca. He's, he's going to get, he's going to give us a ride. He's got the ship. He's yeah. the pilot. I know where we need to go because yeah. I'm in on the plan. Yeah. The eagle flies south at noon. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think the theory is kind of fun. I think the theory is completely to cover mm-hmm. the fact that Lucas was like, Oh, yeah, oh. he had his memory. F- right. yeah. He didn't, mm-hmm. and Chewie was there. Yeah. Uh, marketing, marketing. Buy don't, new, don't worry about Buy a new Chewie more, figure. More things. Makes yeah. sense. But you know what? I can get behind it and have a little fun with this. Well, theory. that's what theories are. Right. They're, they're getting... Would you, are you excited to hear maybe that Chewie's a rebel spy? Oh, my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's made my day. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, come on. That's why I said continuity issues, blah, blah, blah. Let's get some okay. hot dogs. I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Flip the legs. Well, there are you? theories. I'm so excited about all of those. Mm-hmm. I just love hearing them. There's a few that are a little bit out of it, and I'm like, oh, yeah. you're high. But still, I love, do- I love hearing them. Yeah, and I know uh, we did not get into a lot of Episode 7 speculation, folks. That's just because that's what it is. It's Episode 7 speculation. Yeah. And uh, I, myself, as a Star Wars fan, just kind of want to f- see the movie... I want to decide for myself if I'm going to leave the theater or not. But if you do want to hear some of the Ep7 theories, jump onto our Facebook page. There is one there by Andrew Slayton, Slatton, who has said um, a Gwendolyn Christie, mm-hmm. perhaps, theory about her role, and it, and it goes into that. So definitely keep that discussion happening there. That's what it's for. Yeah, absolutely. And look, there's a lot more. We could spend a lot more time on theories. Again, it's fun to delve into. So go ahead and continue the conversation on Twitter at Jedi Alliance SK or the Schmoes No. Uh, uh, Jet Alliance on Schmoes No Network. That's a mouthful. We might have, have to shut Four that down. Four times out of five, I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Never tell me the odds. <laughs> uh, keep adding. Keep the conversation going. Talk amongst yourselves. It's been fun reading all your theories and your speculations for Episode 7. And believe me, as we get closer to Episode 7, we will be addressing what we think or want to have happen in that. Now it's time to get forced on with you guys over the weekend on disney xd you would have noticed that there was the premiere episode of star wars rebels it's got a particular name what's the name of it spark of rebellion there it is yes Sparky. there's the crew Hi guys. of the ghost 
Um, mm-hmm. Now, there was a sort of a double feature episode, so it was 45 minutes long or so? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, but basically two back-to-back episodes, 22 minutes each roughly. Uh, it was uh, slapped together to kind of form one, uh, much like they did with Clone Wars, which they actually released in the theaters. This mm-hmm. one they just put as a special event movie on TV. This is where we meet the crew. This is where we kind of get to know Ezra, who is um, our down and out little street rat um, that looks surprisingly like someone who uh, Megan will fill you in on. Um, And we've also got some feedback from you guys uh, Mm. that you wrote on the Facebook page and Twitter. But let's talk about, do we do a spoiler recap or do we kind of keep it a little bit safe? Uh, You know, we'll try to keep it as be be warned for possible spoilers is what I'll say. Little Muppet flail arms. Um, we, we sat together as a team yesterday and watched this over at my cantina mm-hmm. and we had uh, we had fun watching it overall I enjoy it what do you think okay so we're going to talk about the highlights from the episode it may not be kind of related to the plot line but ha- mm. the the sound effects guys yeah. are so oh, good yeah. I had a little bit of a geekgasm when I heard that first TIE fighter yeah she did it was fun to watch yeah. oh, I was like there it is that's amazing <laughs> I love it yeah <laughs> There are a lot of kind of nods to Die Hard fans. Yes, this is kind of skewed for the 10-year-olds. Um, <laughs> kind of. But yeah, but there's a 10-year-old in all of us, really. That sounds Aww, really bad if you think that about is, it. Let's that is. Move, so let's move on. Um, but what I did notice is that the they had payoffs for the fans. So I was like, yeah. yes, I have mm-hmm. to sit through a, a kid's cartoon, but I'm going to really enjoy when you bring up, you know, things from the movies or characters or phrases or whatever it is. Um, so I appreciated that one. I loved that there's two women in this, technically. Sure. Mm-hmm. One's a Twi'lek, uh, the other one's a um, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, and they kick ass. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, Hera is the, the Twi'lek, the green Twi'lek. She... Uh, flies the ship. She's the wash mm. of the Firefly br- the Firefly crew. Um, and then you've got um, Sabine, who is an explosives expert. Yeah. How fun was that, that when was she just cool. blew stuff up? Yeah. And so they've got such grit, these characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I think everyone kind of has a little bit of a cliched role with that, which we'll go into, um, especially with Ezra, which has <laughs> been used before. But let's remember that Disney has bought Star Wars. It was very yeah. obvious yeah. with this character. A lot of people were commenting about it, but you hadn't seen those comments yet. So no, you, not at all. It filtered into your brain naturally yeah. that you thought he was. The Jedi Aladdin. Yeah. Like yeah. the moment he started stealing things, I was like, gotta stay. One, One jump, jump head of the law man. Yeah. Yeah. One swing, head of the sword. <laughs> yeah. Um, Even his like, hey, yeah, catchy and it, phrases and like the way, you know. He saves someone, he saves a merchant, right, but then ends yeah. up stealing from him anyway. And the guy's like, hey, what are you doing? And it's like, I, I steal only what I can afford. And that's, that's everything. everything. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely there. Um, on our Facebook page though, someone has actually put up a photo of Ezra and Aladdin oh. and they could be brothers. Yes. Yeah. That's when I was like, hi, Disney. How mm-hmm. are yeah. you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same nose, same hairstyle. Mm-hmm. It's it's Aladdin. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Jedi the other Aladdin. big comparisons of that, it is the Firefly crew. You know, yeah. it's on a mm-hmm. ship. The picture that we had all together, you know, Zeb is Jane um, Cobb. Mm. Is that his name? Jane? Yeah, mm-hmm. Jane. Um, who's the you know r- the rough kind of I'll oh, punch first and ask questions later kind of thing. Um, you've got Zoe, who is Sabine, like the badass. Wash is Hera. Parallels. There's absolute parallels. Yeah. What you won't find though is um, uh, uh, what's her name? Alara, uh, the um, the uh, hi- escort, the high class Bonkarama girl in Firefly because Mm. this is a a kids movie and I'm kind of realizing that even though we know there's a little bit of backstory between uh, Kanan and Hera, we're never gonna see them get it on. Right, right. And and in New Dawn, which again we're talking about next week, there's a a little bit of a romance brewing. Now, New Dawn takes place six years before the events of this show, Um, so who knows what happened in those six years. But uh, overall, look, I want to say overall, I really enjoyed this show. (laughs) Uh, overall, I like where Kenberg and Filoni are going to take the series. There's some great things. I, too, the speeder bike sounds yeah. were awesome. Cool. The opening shot of the Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, love yeah, that. Classic. I love seeing I the stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like seeing the Imperial... It's familiar territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, though, the, the show itself, I get that it, the Clone Wars had a bunch of kid stuff in it. Yeah. There was like a frog character and a shark character. So I can, I can play in the kids' land, so to speak. Illegally still allowed. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, there was a, just a fun opening sequence. The action was great. I totally got into the story. Just some of the animation for me didn't. It's it's this a little guy's different. This beard. He looks oh, like he's wearing I, a fence around his face. I don't like. I, I like Kanan. I don't like his design. I get rid of the weird beard that matches his helmet. Uh, mm. The Wookiees looked like 1995 oh. cut scenes from PC games. Oh, that really bad. bad. It took me out of the show. They look more like ants than Wookiees. <laughs> <laughs> it just. 
uh, didn't enjoy that. Well, and- I noticed there was a sweeping shot of like the the meadows, the fields, and there was like wheat flowing around, mm-hmm. but they couldn't draw like, any hair. No, yeah. hair does not move. And we got Chopper up. I like Chopper the <laughs> astromech. Did you like Chopper, Megan? R2 fart bot? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> we noticed that his sound, if you listen to Chopper, it sounds like a bunch of fart Farts. noises. <laughs> edited together it's just a little bit too deep yeah, yeah. but i do like sharp you got to have a droid and mm. he's got a oh, personality to it I, I get it now we haven't seen the second episode some people have seen that um but uh it's a it factors in with some droid stuff too now we've got up this scene towards the end uh, again my uh, spoilers if you haven't watched it maybe turn away muppet flail arms uh this is uh, the villain himself is not a spoiler he's been out the design has been out this is mm-hmm. the inquisitor yeah uh, played by Jason Isaacs, who's uh, the, the Malfoy father in the mm-hmm. Harry Potter series. He, Lucius Malfoy. Oh. Lucius Malfoy. So uh, I really am intrigued to see where this character goes. It's a dark-looking character. Yeah. It brings in some dark undertones, I think, to the series. And it means that the incompetent Imperial stormtroopers have someone with some actual skills behind them. That was one thing we noticed. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the Stormtrooper's <laughs> aim has not improved guys. Not at all. And in fact, uh, tip to everybody, you know, in the Rebel side, if you just start walking towards <laughs> them, yeah. they will I stop s- shooting, apparently. That's just how, just just start walking towards them. Everybody yeah. will stop. They will just miss they will more. Just, yeah, mm. so they'll just stop completely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. he's walking towards us. I don't know what to do now. But this looks important. Yeah, I think he has something to say. <laughs> Oh, they're talking to us. Yeah, the, I, uh, yeah. The that shooting. Scene. They were like pausing. I'm like, hey, yeah. we should do this right now. While there's like bullets flying by. Yeah, they're having a full conversation. Yeah. In these sort of battles, I mean, this is a crew that has a lot of history. They I mean, they seem to be doing a lot of things, a lot like Firefly. You know, very much. Yeah, they do these missions. It would be really great if one of them kind of got a little bit of a graze on the arm and went, Just oh, like, oh, not oh. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like they do get hit. Remember sometimes. that one time they also shot us a few years ago? Yeah, yeah. that happened one other time. There's Just some now. actual, yeah, damage. <laughs> My my biggest thing, and overall, I, I don't like to to snark shows, and I like to celebrate. This is the purpose of our show, so I'm really excited with Rebels and see where it goes and how it ties in everything. I right now, and I know you can throw the Ahsoka Tano argument from Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. I despise Ezra. I have no sympathy for this character, and he is a little uh, censored word redacted. Uh, he is uh, I, I, that open scene, the Aladdin scene. He's still. I don't root for Aladdin this character. Aladdin is likable because of Abu. Yes, yeah. as we were saying, he doesn't have yeah. his doesn't like have an abu. his his little salacious become spirit animal. That, with that's him. actually yeah. a um, you know. a factor when making a villain or mm-hmm. a, a likable character. They use it in Pacific Rim with Robert Kaczynski's character, who mm-hmm. was like the the a hole. They mm-hmm. gave him a dog. And he yes, was really right. close and yeah. patted the dog. And then you're like, I Aww, can't hate he him. He has some humanity. It's, yeah. it, in in yeah. screenwriting, it's called the save the cat moment that you need kind of early. And now I get the character's going to grow. I get right. that's the point. The character's going to change. And Ahsoka was an annoying kind of side character called Snips and all this stuff. By the end of it, she was one of my favorite characters. Mm. And I hope she shows up here again. But... I get that Ezra's going to grow. So, uh, well, it's Kane and saying, "Wow, I see, the subtext was hitting all of us in the face." Yeah, uh, but it was, you know, I see myself in this guy. Yeah, yeah. but he's really clever, and he doesn't even know it. it. Yeah, yeah, it just it, I, kids are tough to do. I get it. So I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying, for me as a viewer. I was taken out almost immediately with Ezra. I was just like, mm. I, I, I'd rather just see this crew flying around doing what they did. Right. Mm. Okay. I can, I can feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Can yeah. you, dog? I don't. <laughs> What the heck was that? Uh, yeah, they just spent like such a small amount of time making him feel like a likable character. It was like, mm. oh, here, have a thing to eat. Okay, see you later, bye. Now I'm going to be a little punk kid and ruin mm. these guys' lives and plans. Mm-hmm. I thought the Zeb character was a little bit over the top. It was like, yeah. we get it. You don't like particular <laughs> things, but you ha- you don't have to say it nine different times in nine different ways. Yes. And it was yeah. just yeah. a little bit exposition, like... Exposition, 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 exposition. But yeah. it was relentless. Yes. It was yeah. like, what Absolutely. is it about this what is it about Ezra so a little bit of a spoiler is that Zeb and Ezra don't see eye to eye Mm -hmm. he just doesn't like this kid like you Mm. you're Zeb good work Um, I'm Zeb but does he need a why why don't you like this guy a little bit and again Kanan was a great character I think Kanan is one of the best things of New Dawn establishing the character but unfortunately I felt I needed to read the book to fully get what Kanan is and that's part of the problem I think Mm -hmm. when you have this Marvel Studios way of storytelling we're going to connect everything yeah uh, you have to really have find that balance between things that stand alone. I agree. Kanan was good in the show, but it was like he's just kind of this dude. And I think Freddie Prince Jr. is doing a great job. He has that's a great character. Agree. In the book, it was much.
much more of a and I get books are much more flushed out characters I get that but I felt I needed that to absolutely like we, I recommend reading the book before you go in as well because otherwise these characters can be very very two dimensional it's mm-hmm. great knowing their backstory like these yeah. little quips of dialogue between Kanan and Hera you get it more because they've yeah. had a book of adventures it's together history. yeah as yeah. somebody who hadn't read the book I felt like should I know these two mm. people is there, am I, right. did I miss it is there another episode I should have watched but the book is right. not uh, pitched towards kids so not necessarily no not really you know no. what I mean it's like what are we doing yeah. we're reading the book to get to know the, and the, I, the characters and again we're picking apart a, a with kids, essentially a yes, children's yes. show yes. and I had to remind myself over and over yeah. kids show kids show kids show but it had a lot of anticipation behind it a lot of people mm-hmm. love it a lot of people out there love it you've been oh. tweeting us that you thought it was great yes on the Facebook page we had Rasika say Star Wars plus Firefly plus Avatar The Last Bender Airbender, sorry, equals Rebels. I love it. Ian has said, you see it in the trailer, but the point where Kanan decides to reveal to the world that he's a Jedi was freaking awesome. I absolutely loved it. And Andrew said, loved it. It's got such an original trilogy feel, but it also reminds me of Firefly. Mm -hmm. I agree with the Firefly. Yeah, look, and hey, the important thing is there's new Star Wars material coming out every week right now. Yeah, And that's exciting, whether or not I liked the pilot or not overall. And overall, I did. I did, yeah. Um, That's exciting. We're going to have new Star Wars stuff. And there was the constantly now the ATP ATMP or whatever it is yeah, yeah. the new thing yeah it had the Walker sound but it was yeah. it's a it was like a what do we say it was again why are we all stuck for words all of a sudden yeah. <laughs> the P stand for like provisional pro uh, pro uh, yeah pro. Petite, it's a petite ad yeah, it was one of, it was one of the leaked uh, images for the new series from Rebels uh, the Lego toys yeah. mm-hmm. and it wasn't an ATST it was an ATPD or something yeah and I think we saw that in the premiere episode it was good yeah, it was and cute. again uh, the, the sound the sound yeah. design was awesome. <laughs> The sound design was awesome. So that's our take on Rebels. We're going to put it out to you. Continue the conversation on Twitter, hashtag Jedi Alliance, and follow us at Jedi Alliance SK. And on the Facebook page, Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network. Tell us more about what you thought about Rebels. And Rebels. We're, we're not going to review it every week, obviously. It's a show that's going to be going on, but we'll touch base. I don't even have again. TV channels. That's right. Mm-hmm. We'll have to come on over and have Star Wars Night at the old oh, cantina. Yeah. We'll watch Rebels. So I'm excited again that there's something new. So that's been kind of a Phil, fun-filled theory and review episode of Jedi Alliance. It's been a really long episode, and we are running out of time, so we're going to have to pull trivia, but don't worry, it'll be back next week. Absolutely. On the way that my brain's working, it's probably a good thing that we're not doing <laughs> it. <laughs> Nobody knows uh, about Megan, no words. Thanks for Tom's coming last in. name? And, uh, 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 alone? Chewbacca. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming in and celebrating Star Wars with us. Please oh, tell the nice me. people where they can find you. You can find me on the Twitter at Megan Finley. You can also find me on the websites that I, you know, blog for on Offbeat Home and Offbeat Bride mm-hmm. and uh, Instagram at Maggie Finn. That's right. And uh, before we go, of course, we like to do our in memory section. And this yeah. week, uh, we are paying our respects to Mahler Mathel. That's right. Oh, sure. Technically, any agent of the Empire can fly a TIE fighter. Many, maybe even a few rogue rebels or escaped Wookiees. But to really master the art of flying one with its powerful twin ion engines takes a level of skill not easily appreciated. TIE fighter pilots graduate from the Imperial Navy Flight Academy as masters of their craft, which makes it all the more impressive that pilot DS 61. Dash 2 was assigned to the Black Squadron and trusted with the post as Black 2, the left wingman for the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader. His name was Mahler Mithel. Mithel was raised to be a great pilot, having mastered his fa- father's tricky T-16 Skyhopper while hunting Both and Sky Dragons in his youth. From there, he entered the renowned Imperial Academy, graduating in the top percentile of his class. He quickly worked his way up the ranks and, in fact, had 27 confirmed kills prior to the Battle of Yavin. Along with the pilot known as Backstabber, Mahler Mithel was a trusted and respected wingman for Lord Vader. So it was a bit of an ironic tragedy that it was a collision with the man he was sworn to protect at that collision ended his life. As Vader and his wingmen raced down the Death Star Trench and zeroed in on the lone X-Wing fighter aiming to take out the battle station, the Carillion cruiser known as the Millennium Falcon Piloted by known criminal Han Solo, appeared out of nowhere with a blast of laser bolts. The Falcon took out Backstabber. The resulting explosion caused Mathel to momentarily lose control of the ship he had spent years mastering to fly. His last words were, look out! But it was too late. Mathel's TIE fighter collided with Vader's TIE advanced, sending the Dark Lord spinning out of control into the blackness of space and sending Mathel crashing into the side of the Death Star Trench. A moment of victory snatched from the Empire and a life of a great pilot lost. Mathel left behind one son, Reglai Mathel, who later served the Empire as a tractor beam operator in non-canon stories. Rest in peace, Mahler. You served the Empire well. He saved Darth's life. 
He really did. Because the Darth ricocheted off him mm-hmm. and he then did. the Death yeah. Star exploded. Yep. We really owe a lot to him. Yeah, dude. We do. We do. Hey, to wrap things up, Ken, where can we find you? Uh, at Ken Napsock, of course, at Jedi Alliance SK now. You, Ms. Maud Garrett. I'm at Maud Garrett on Twitter. You can search Maud Garrett on Facebook. I'm the same on Instagram. And make sure you check out Geek Bomb, not only on Facebook, Instagram, but on YouTube as well. That's right. And, of course, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Schmoes No Podcast. You can find all these shows, including Profiles, Guilty Movie Pleasures, Meet the Movie Press, and the Schmoes No Main Show, which, of course, is every Thursday live, 6 p.m. PST on SchmoesNo.com. And don't forget to rate and review this show on iTunes. We know there's been some problems with iTunes. Ugh. It's being worked on. If you need to resubscribe, please, all you need to do is press that button again one more time. So, Thank you for listening to the Jedi Alliance because many boffins died to bring us this information. For producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew, we would like to thank you for listening to the Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network. Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menunos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in stores now. To watch or listen to other Schmoes No Network episodes, get movie news, and join the conversation, be sure to visit SchmoesNo.com and find the Jedi Alliance on iTunes. And subscribe, rate, and review. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of Schmoes No.